Hello everybody, my name is Desi and I am a third year PhD student at the University of Oxford. I'm co-funded by the Doctoral Training Centre and the Food Standards Agency. My, PH my PhD, I'm using bioinformatics and data science techniques to study antibiotic resistance in Campylobacter jejuni. So since AMR is quite a very big subject, we might do more talks in the future from a more biochemistry perspective. So including different antibiotic resistant mechanisms and going more in depth on finding AMR genes using tools, databases, and pipelines. So today we will cover key terminology in the beginning, and then we will go through different concepts and focus more on why studying the emergence and transmission of AMR is essential using these key frames shown on this slide. So microbes are microscopic organisms. They include bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Antimicrobial, therefore, are any substances that kill or stops the growth of these microbes. They're used in a wide range of settings and are thought to have varying impacts on antimicrobial resistance. As you can see, antibiotics are one type of antimicrobials. Example of antibiotics include penicillin, cholestin, tetracycline, fluoroquinolones, and more. These are drugs used to treat bacterial infections in both humans and animals. One of the misconceptions is that antibiotics can miraculously fix any infection, but if it is not caused by bacteria and it is caused by virus and fungi, this will not help. So AMR or antimicrobial resistance is the ability of this microbe to withstand the effect of my antimicrobials. So the use and misuse of antibiotics is a significant factor in developing and spreading antibiotic resistance in bacteria. It is less clear whether other type of antimicrobials also contribute to this resistance. So that's why from now on, um, I'll be talking more about antibiotic resistance uh, using the, the acronym AMR, uh, rather than talking about all the different antimicrobials um, available. So how do we know that the bacteria is antibiotic resistant? So for this, we need AMR genes, which are a short piece of DNA that causes microbes to have antibiotic resistance. So microbes may be resistant to just one antibiotics or many, which is called multi-resistant bacteria, depending on which AMR genes they have. So this can make infections by these microbes challenging to treat, causing infections to persist. Therefore, you might think, Hmm. If we can look at bacteria sequence, DNA sequence, we will, um, we will determine whether the bacteria are resistant to specific antibiotics. But this is actually not 100% true. Although some point mutation or presence of genes could indicate that it will be resistant to particular antibiotics, we do have to understand the concepts of genotype versus phenotype. So in short, the AMR genes does not always lead to the bacteria exhibiting resistant behavior, or we also call this phenotypic behavior. So therefore we have to both look at the sequence, DNA sequence or genotype and test it in the lab to see for the phenotype. So there are multiple methods um, of testing this, and we can go into this potent maybe in the future sessions. But uh, the two main ones are one is MIC, which is minimum inhibitory concentration. So this means uh, which is the lowest concentration of an antibiotics that inhibits the growth of a given strain of a bacteria. And the second, um, another widely known method for this is disk diffusion. So um, basically an effective, an effective antibiotic will produce a large zone of in inhibition. So we can see we have A, B, C. So these will be different type of antibiotics, maybe different um, 
different strengths of antibiotics. And you will be able to see, for example, in the A, they are ineffective antibiotic, B is effective, uh, and then we have C that is very effective antibiotic. Um, they are used to detect phenotypic resistance and clinically testing is based on them. So now we will move on to how can bacteria become resistant to antibiotics? So resistance can develop via two main mechanisms. So the firstly, antibiotic resistance does occur naturally by random mutations, as it is copied during bacterial replication. The second mechanism is by AMR genes being exchanged between bacteria. This not only happens with the same bacteria, but even it can be spread to different, antibio um, different bacterial species. This means that the number of different types of bacteria that have AMR genes increases over time. And we can see it in here as well. So we have pink and red uh, bacteria. So the pink bacteria are the susceptible bacteria. Red one has resistant gene. So antibiotics comes into the system. All the susceptible antibiotics will be killed, but the bacteria that had this AMR genes will survive and will replicate as we can see on this stage as well. So the use of antibiotics producing microbes to prevent disease actually stretches back 2000 years ago. Countries such as Serbia, China, Greece and Egypt used to use a traditional method where moldy bread was used to treat open wounds. Another incredible milestone was made by Alexander Fleming when he accidentally discovered penicillin in 1928. He came back from a vacation and found that there was a green mold um, that had contaminated his petri dishes in his lab. And these were killing some of the bacteria he's been growing. So he isolated this mold, produced more of it, and then experimented to see how many other bacteria it could kill. And it turns out a lot of them. So we now know that penicillin works by preventing bacteria from forming a new cell wall. No new cell wall, no new cell, no new bacterial growth. The discovery of penicillin started the golden age of natural product antibiotic discovery, which we can see in here. And on the top, there are all the different antibiotics that has been discovered. Um, and in the bottom, we can see when the resistant has been found on these antibiotics as well. In terms of how people can be exposed to AMI microbes, it is actually quite complicated. So people can be exposed to AMI microbes in the same way that we are exposed to normal microbes every day. This can occur by several methods, such as, for example, person to person um, kind of circulation. We can, um, for example, in the hospital, um, we can also gain from sources that have been contaminated, such as animals from the environment. We could have anti AMR that microbes that have been in the aquatic culture, from the food to soil and more. And farm animals are an important component of this complex system. They are exposed to enormous quantity of antibiotics and act as another reservoir of resistant genes. Infections caused by AMI microbes are unlikely to respond to standard treatments, resulting in prolonged illness and a greater health risk. This could lead to more antibiotics being not helpful and causing more infections not to recover in the future. For example, MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is estimated to generate 64% more deaths than infectious than infections caused by a non-resistant strain of the bacteria. AMI microbes are also more likely to be passed on to other people because those infected are not well for a longer time. The O'Neill Review has estimated that AMR's global impact could be 10 million deaths annually. We will look at a small case study of Campylobacter and antibiotic resistance. So Campylobacter is the most common source of bacterial gastroenteritis globally, and it can be commonly linked to sources such as chickens, unpastoralized milk, and contaminated water as well. Most cases of food poisoning, such as those caused by Salmonella and Campylobacter, usually do get better by themselves. 
However, as mentioned in the Campylobacter crash course, if the patient is young or elderly, they will be prescribed antibiotics. The FSA commissioned a, a food standard agency, commissioned a UK-wide survey in 2014 to determine how much Campylobacter there was on fresh whole UK produced chickens on sale to the public. A subset of Campylobacter isolates from this survey were also tested for their resistance to five class of antibiotics. So we can see from the results that 24.7% were sensitive to all antimicrobial tested, 70.7% were resistant to one or more antimicrobial tested, and 4.6% were resistant to three or more antimicrobial tested. And since we have about 900 million chicken produced in 2014, this could potentially indicate that millions of chickens with multiple resistant Campylobacter. Public Health England has also conducted another study between 2015 and 2018. They looked at Campylobacter jejuni and Campylobacter coli. And we can see that both of them have still high levels of fluoroconolones and macrolide, um, sorry, not macrolide, tetracycline resistance. Due to this fact, um, if the patient is young or elderly, they'll usually be prescribed macrolides. So how do we stop the antibiotic misuse? Some countries began regulating the use of some drugs for humans and animal use. In this global regulation on antibiotics on livestock, it is estimated that by 2030, antibiotic consumptions in farm animals will go up by 67%. We can see on the legend that we have four main types of antibiotic um, regulations. In 2006, EU banned antibiotic usage for growth promoters in livestock, which we can see in green key, uh, in key D, so the D is the growth promoting um, for promoting antibiotics. We can see that they are all green in the EU countries. In 2022, the aim is to ban therapeutic antibiotics, which is in the band C. So right now we can see some of them are C, which means restrictions, but they will be hopefully be uh, also banned in 2022 as well. However, as we see the whole um, map in the many developing countries such as Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia and Peru are the biggest forecast growth of the antibiotic usage. Vietnam, for example, will have 215% increase in their antibiotic um, antibiotics in their country. We can see in many countries that almost all type of antibiotic resistance are red which means that um, there is no control in antibiotic usage in their countries. But this shows us that the antibiotic problem cannot be solved by only one country alone. So given how interconnected the rise and spread of AMR is, how can we prevent it? So we can only take antibiotics when we were prescribed by the doctors and to be really well informed about that antibiotics will not solve all other viral infections, for example. So you, can, you shouldn't be going to a doctor and say, I want antibiotics, um, despite that you don't have antibiotic um, bacterial infections, for example. We also have to maintain um, good hygiene and make sure you only take your medications. So don't take anybody else's prescriptions. Um, also, the Food Standard Agency have advocated the usage of four Cs. So to make sure we avoid cross-contamination, to cook throughout your meat, to chill at the right temperature, and to make sure you do wash your vegetables and fruits that will not be heated otherwise. So if there were any antibiotic um, bacteria on the surface, you should be really washing them through. I hope this crash course brought you some new information into your AMR vocabulary. If you'd like to learn more about AMR, there are AMR response forums and groups from DAR WHO, Welcome and FAO available for you to read more. There are also many courses such as the One Health Poetry Hub, um, 
so new a new course has just launched and future learn have many courses on AMR and um, how to also if you if you would like to go into more bioinformatics as well. And there is also a board game developed by Dr. Celia from the University of Oxford called Drugs versus Bugs to where you would take the role of a team of doctors treating patients infected by bacteria or viruses represented um, by the pathogen cards. So um, please look out for that as well. So here are some extra resources if you would like to dive into the literature of AMR. Um, and we also have um, these two incredible talks by P Professor Pablo Tsukayama, Guillermo and Alejandra on chicken AMR and E. coli in an informal urban settlement, Lima, Peru. And we also had another talk by Professor Timothy Walsh, Antimicrobial Resistance in Chickens, Beyond Politics and Global Economics. There was, especially there was a talk in there about colistin ban in China and how has that affected the colistin resistance in China. So if you're interested in these talks, please look out for them in our YouTube channel. Thank you.